Well, it's personal between me and I'm going to do you some serious harm, you big stiff idiot. The Untouchable True School Sports Empire proudly presents something the boxing game's been missing. Hey, what's going on? It's your boy BT, and I came here to talk some boxing with the thousands of True School Sports subscribers. All right, so I wanted to discuss this potential Naya in a way matchup because, you know, again, there's so many video ideas I get throughout the course of a month, and I got to make the videos, otherwise I forget about them, and other things come up, and boxing just moves so fast, so... I wanted to speak about this because I think one of the most interesting matchups in the future that could happen for Naya in a way is him versus the newly crowned WBO champion, the Mexican Divino Rafael Espinoza. I love that fight a lot because first of all, it makes a lot of sense. We know that Naya in a way was targeting a mood of featherweight. Um, he's still targeting a mood of featherweight, but we knew that that top rank, the guy that they were going to line up for him most likely was Robesi Ramirez. Now, well, Basi Ramirez lost to Rafael Espinosa. So in my mind, Rafael Espinosa has taken Robesi's spot in the queue as the lead guy to get the fight. That's, that's how I feel. And I think it's a very interesting matchup because in a way, he's a, a, obviously a smaller fighter who'll be coming up in weight, you know, um, getting a lot of knockouts and championship fights. Fighting a, a guy in Espinosa who's taller, rangier, um, has a good educated jab, puts very nice educated pressure on, and also has a way about him of throwing a, a lot of punches in the second half of a fight and really wearing you down and wearing you out, right? And so we saw, I think I think Espinosa's a guy, and the reason I'm such a big fan of Espinosa is because he fought Robesi Ramirez as a 6-1 to underdog. He had never fought anywhere on that level before, and what did he do? He rose to the occasion. You know, that, that, that phrase, rising to the occasion, it means that you, you have to go to a level you've never been to before. And he was tasked with a very difficult um, opponent, and he rose to that level and was better than him on the night, right? So that tells me that he's got the mind of a, of a top-level, upper-echelon championship fighter to fight under those lights. And I think he's going to be champion for a little bit of time. I, I really do. Good fighter. In a way, of him, I think stylistically, and even from a from a... Just a storyline standpoint, it, it does remind me a little bit about, it could be like Wilfredo Gomez versus Salvador Sanchez. Like, Wilfredo Gomez was the seemingly invincible knockout puncher that could do no wrong in the lower weight classes. He was a 3-1 to one favorite when he fought Salvador Sanchez. We know the story. Salvador Sanchez absolutely beat the brakes off of Wilfredo Gomez when he came up to, um, to fight him, right? Same thing could be the case here. Espinosa... I know it will probably be a much more than 3-1 to one underdog win, uh, win if he ever fights in a way. But um, same thing. Taller, rangier guy. Obviously, I don't think he's as skilled as Salvador Sanchez. But still a fighter that's in development. And I think it's going to get better. And I think by the time in a way would get to featherweight, that would be an attractive fight. Um, now, it could, either be the, it, it could either be like Salvador Sanchez versus Alfredo Gomez. Or it could be like Nioa in a way versus Jamie McDonald. When, when, when he fought at Bantamweight, McDonald was a tall guy. McDonald was uh, someone that absolutely, because he was a bigger, lankier target, got butchered, and it didn't last too damn long. So um, it, it could go one of two ways. But either way, I think that's a fight that ESPN and Top Rank would um, be very intrigued by, just because of the fact that you know you got Espinosa, who's got a very fan friendly style. He's Mexican. He's the new champion. He seems to be a very per he he is a personal person. I met him in real life. He seems to be the people's champion of Mexico. They're doing parades and stuff for him. He's the hometown hero. So there's a lot of boxes. I feel like Espinosa ticks in the ring, out the ring. And um, that really should be. If, if, Esp if, if Robesi was the leader of the featherweights to get the in way fight, Espinosa beat him, he should take his place in the queue because he has his belt now, right? And um, shit, just a really good fight. Um, in a way, one thing about him, and I, and, I, and people uh, people don't like when I say this. The in a way fans don't. In a way fans don't like when I when I say anything objective that's not positive about in a way. But this is just the truth. No fighter's perfect. I don't care how many guys he knocked out. I don't care how many weight classes he scaled. I don't care what you think about him. I'm telling you what I know. Okay. In a way, is a great fighter, very skilled, but there are times in fights. Like against Donaire, against even Tapales, and spots that fight as well. When you push him on the back foot, he does, he's not the most comfortable, and that's when he has his least amount of success. That's his weakness. That's his weakness in his game is is fighting off that back foot. Luckily for him, there haven't been too many fighters he's been 
that he's fought that have, that, that have had the capability to, to do that for a long period of time. The only guys that have been able to do, to do a period at all have been Donaire in the first fight and to Paulus in the... Um, in the in the in in the in the recent fight, you know, everyone else been getting butchered and knocked the knocked the hell out. When he goes featherweight, guy a guy like Espinosa, I feel, I genuinely believe this, will be capable of putting Naoya in a way on the back foot more than he's accustomed to. And in a way is gonna have to show maybe something a little bit different in that fight. I think um his overall boxing skills would have to be a lot more on display that fight. And um it might actually be the kind of fight that brings up the best in a way because Espinosa is not going nowhere. Espinosa is going to keep throwing punches. He's going to put that educated pressure on you. He's going to stick that long, ragey jab out in your face. And it's going to be a difficult night for you. And it's not just Espinosa. I think guys like, you know, um, Odebeck Komatov, Angelo Leo. I think these guys all have the capabilities to put in away on his back foot more than he's accustomed to. Right? And that's why him at featherweight is something I'm damn near obsessed with. Because I think the fights there is... Uh, Fights against some of those guys I named are, are really interesting style matchups. I don't care who lost to, I don't care if they fought an ex-NOA opponent and they lost what they did. In the, I'm saying style-wise. Styles make fights. Triangle theories don't work. I think Espinosa versus Inoue is one of the most interesting matchups out there for him. One of the best matchups out there for him. One of the top, I would say, five fights you can make for Inoue is him versus Rafael Espinosa at featherweight. Um, but again, Espinosa has to keep winning. He has to keep getting better. He has to hold on to that title. And he has to actually be able to make featherweight because he's so big. I don't know who, who knows how long he can make featherweight. You know, he may outgo the weight by the time in a way he becomes a, 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 a 126 pounder. So maybe this is all just hearsay. But um, just wanted to talk about it because I do think it is a good fight. And I do think Espinosa is a fighter in boxing that is worth our time, our attention. Um, and I'm looking forward to seeing what he does in 2024 because it's one thing to get the belt. It's one thing to get the belt. Can you keep it? You know, the real work, the real work really starts now for Espinosa. Espinosa. He's got to defend the dirt, defend the crown, and show the world that, hey, he's a legitimate world champion. And if, as he, if he's able to do that, then it's going to go a long way towards getting that fight with um, the monster down the road. But uh, let, let, let me know what you guys think. What, do you, what would you guys think about, in a way, in the future, in a potential fight against Rafael Espinosa? Um, leave a comments down below. Make sure you guys take the time to subscribe. And like I say in every single one of these videos, you can love me or you can hate me. But I'm just a kid from Daniels. So until next time, take care, guys. Thank you for watching another video on the Untouchable True Street Sports Empire. We're here at the Hatanaka Boxing Gym in Nagoya, Japan. And uh, for more great videos just like this one, make sure you guys click right here.